everyone, this is Ali Kojinski, Roman and Stewart. Today we will be working on the study. Um, it's going to be a short video, but I would like to share some tricks with you. I used to struggle with this code a lot. Uh, the studies and wastes that I clipped, um, giving them, just because I always left the clipper marks on the jacket and it drove me crazy. I didn't know what to do. Um, I didn't know what I was doing wrong. And after doing some research and uh, trying all different kind of things, um, I figured out a couple of tricks that helped me to manage this code. First thing first, um, it's important to choose the right shampoo and conditioner to bathe these dogs. Um, studies and wasties, they have to, they have undercoat. And that's what makes it harder to, to clip. Uh, that's what gives those um, clip marks in the not removed. So, um, I found out that the best thing, the best shampoo to use on these dogs is the shaving shampoo and the shaving conditioner to help to loosen up that undercoat. Um, good blow dryer will take care of some of this undercoat. And then the next step, which is the best thing to do is to part this coat. Um, there are two ways you can do it. You can use the rake. This is actually a rake and it works amazing. Or you can use um, the stripping knife, I mean the carding knife, which looks like this. Um, the main important part is to remove this undercoat. That will help you to make the coat look Nice and smooth. Um, I'll show you how to do it with the um, rake first. Stretch the skin away from you. Use the rake in the direction the hair grows so you can remove all this undercoat. While you're doing this, I wouldn't run the, I wouldn't run the tool there's a rake on one spot over and over again just because of the delivery and the skin is an actual damage and make sure that you stretch it away from you to remove that undercoat also be very careful with your hand um, don't bend your wrist back and forth or uh, left and right that will um, if you keep bending your wrist eventually that will damage your wrist so make sure that you keep your wrist very stable and just um, in a very sturdy motions um, rake the coat from point A to point B and as you can see I'm moving with my whole body um, I'm not doing just with the rake because that will damage your wrist Make sure you run the rake on the whole jacket, which will include the shoulders, the ribs, the thigh muscle, the top line. Everywhere that you will run your clipper. The other tool that you can use is the Ooh, only something in my nose is the stripping knife or parting knife. Same, similar technique. Uh, you will need to pull the skin away from you. Hold the um, the stripping knife or the parting knife rather flat, just like that. Don't hold it on the angle. If you hold it on the angle like this, you will damage the skin and you will damage the coat. It has to be nice and flat and move it as, um, as smoothly as possible with your hand being stable without bending your wrist again. Straight the skin away from you, hold your knife flat on, on, on the body, just like that. I'm trying to show you how to hold it. It should be flat like this. And then pull it in one stroke from point A to point B all the way from, well, I'm starting from the shoulders down to the, um, to the tail. And then I'm gonna part the um, crest as well. See how much undercoat that removes? 
that will make that will ensure your haircut um, without the clipper marks. So the de-shading shampoo first. Finish up with the shading conditioner to loosen up the undercoat. Very good blow dry will um, remove some of this undercoat. Use your um, anti spray or carding uh, knife to remove the um, undercoat, and then you can safely use the clippers that will help to prevent um, those clipper, clipper marks. Avoid running the uh, knife on one spot over and over again. Keep moving and also move with the whole body rather than with just with your with your hand. Already? I'm gonna pause the video and I'm going to, I'm going to get back to you guys when I finish carding carding her just uh, for the sake of uh, time saving. All right, so I am done with the carding. Look how much undercoat. Crazy, it's like snowy here. Anyway, if you are new to the carding. Um, check the skin once in a while, make sure that you don't leave any <laughs> scratches or um, red skin or irritation. Um, if you notice that you do, you're probably doing something wrong, um, so you will have to readjust your uh, motions, do not put too much pressure, let the tool do the job, and make sure you stretch the skin and uh, don't run it on one spot over and over and over again. <coughs> Alright, um, carding. Um, not only helps with um, uh, creating beautiful haircut, it also helps with the, uh, it also promotes healthy skin. Um, um, if you've been grooming for a while, you probably know that a lot of studies obviously they come with some skin conditions, some bumps and um, blood follicles, um, some sebaceous cysts infected or uh, you know impacted. I'm sorry. So um, that's. The, the reason why is because the follicles that get blocked um, because of the undercoat hasn't been removed um, from the follicles. Also, normally when I grow my scabies oasis, I do not go as I do not go too short. I do not I use five or seven, uh, very very rarely, um, to create more of a natural look. I prefer to use a one or two snap on comb. Um, sometimes in summertime when people ask me to go shorter, I do with a 2 or 4 snap on comb. And I also use um, wool uh, for this clipper. I just like how light it is and how much of a less vibration it makes and it is more comfortable for me and for the dogs and I feel it's um, easier on my wrist. So this is a snap on comb and um, it's specifically designed for wool. It is number four, which is supposed to leave about one fourth of an inch of six millimeters um, on the body. Alrighty, let me move her so you guys can see. She's a pet, um, and it's summertime, so she's going to have a short jacket. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this, the same length on, on the whole jacket. Um, she's a pet, and this is for the maintenance reason. We want to keep her short. Um, and prevent from netting and all this stuff and you know and you know okay uh, let me adjust my camera so you guys can see hopefully you can see you can see how smooth it is and if we have if you notice that you're flipping the coat, but the coat is still not smooth enough, 
and it, uh, you feel like it's leaving, it still um, leaves some clipper marks, finish up with your cutting knife or um, your, your, the rake, the industry. What tool do you use important? Um, during the grooming as well as the finishing product. And I'm just gonna show you very quickly how smooth this haircut can be. Let me move her to this way a little bit. I'm not applying um, any pressure on my clipper. I let the clipper do the work. I try to keep my wrist as stable as possible. Not only for the sake of a um, good haircut, but also for the sake of my hands. To keep my hands healthy so they can last for a long time. Okie dokie. So I'm just gonna do one side um, just to show you how smooth this haircut looks. to not only keep your hands stable but also to finish the stroke don't just um, start and stop start and stop start and stop when you do that you will create the clipper marks um, if you go down with um, if you hold your clipper on the angle this way this way most likely you will leave a like this. You will leave an, a, a um, clipper mark. If it's flat, with the blade being flat like this, less likely you will leave a clipper mark. Okay? So, nice and flat. Finish your stroke. Um, the reason why you want to finish the stroke is because if you keep um, starting and taking off, putting down, taking off, you will automatically create the grips. Um, just like if you if you draw the line, if you draw the line from point A to point B, uh, it will be a nice smooth straight line. But if you uh, take breaks and pick up your pen and then draw again, you will have some breaks there. Same thing is with your clipper. If you uh, run, pick it up, run, pick it up, you will create those breaks. So nice smooth strokes. Move with your body. From point A to point B, no breaks anywhere, no stops. You only stop when you want to finish, um, to finish your life. Even like on the body, when I run it on the body, I keep running it down. Uh, I'm not running it down to, to the belly because I want to leave the skirt, but to create to create the smooth transition from the ribs to the skirt, you will need to continuously running it, um, running it down to the table, perpendicular to the table, not inside, down. As you can see while I'm doing this, I'm already creating that smooth transition, so it's gonna be less finishing work that I will need to do with my thinning shears to um, to create that smooth transition. All right, I'm just gonna do one side. So now I finish my clipper work. You still can see some of the clipper mark, that's normal. Um, I'm going to finish up 
first with the with the rake and I want to see how it's going to look like sometimes rake using just the rake is enough um, sometimes you will have to finish up with the um, pride knife to make it look more smooth Running a rake or the cutting knife helps to remove those little pieces of um, undercoat that you missed before you did the haircut. But it's so fine, it smooths smooth out all those imperfections, making it look even smoother. I feel like I want to use um, my thinning sheet just in a couple of places to make it look even better. Like there's a couple of, a couple of pieces sticking out here. I like to use my thinning shears to smooth it out especially on the um, transition line between the short area and the longest area using your thinning shears is a very good idea to make it look even more flashy even more smooth i'm not digging in into the coat i'm only um, running my um, thinning shears on the surface just to get rid of all these in, um, impurities some little imperfections you have to keep your hands stable again and you have to move in one line in one piece um, to avoid putting or creating the scissor marks now if you're bouncing like this you will create the um, the marks, the, the scissor marks. It's important to move very um, smoothly in one line without bouncing. And I'm holding my hand like this, this is not ideal. The only reason I'm doing it this way is because um, I want you guys to see. Normally I would go in front of the dog and I will hold my shears um, straight like that with my hand straight with no breaks in my hand anywhere to make sure I don't damage my hand if you are digging into the undercoat you will create clip of arms so um, this is the skill that you will need to work on for the better smooth finishing thinning shears. Um, the comb will pick up those little pieces that you miss and the thinning shears will cut them. I really, I'm running my comb right now um, and I really don't see any longer pieces sticking out so I'm not going to use it on this side.
Oh, and these thinning sheets I really do love. I just got them recently. Um, these are uh, Black Panther, I believe Black Panther from Precision Shop. They're very light um, and I do love the finishing, um, what is it? The finishing, right? Yeah, the finishing. <laughs> so, um, it really leaves the coat nice and smooth. I use it a lot, I use the, this sheet a lot for blending and um, to smooth out my hair cuts. Alrighty. Now, hold up the middle of the new one. Perfect. Nice, smooth, um, beautiful haircut. I like to finish it up with the spray, um, the conditioning spray to make it look even flushy, only one spray, and I use the continuous spray bottle. Um, just one mist is good enough. I really do like this bottle. The mist is very light, and because it's continuous, um, you can just mist it, spray it one time, move it with the bottle, and it will spray and mist the whole body. Alrighty. That's about it for today. We were working on the studies code. The prep work is very important. Um, just to make sure that we remember everything. Start with the dishading shampoo and conditioner. Hard, 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 low, dry first. Hard, 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 hard. Um, use your clippers, don't go too short. Don't dig in. Um, run your clippers in a stable movement from point A to point B. Try not to apply a lot of pressure, let the clipper do the work. Um, I use the Andy spray. Uh, I use the wall clipper, the Utsumi foam. Um, for finishing touches, it's perfect. Um, my Black Panther Precision Sharp shears. And honestly, I don't know the name of the brand of this um, knife that's pretty old it's pretty old if I if I if I if I remember I will let you know already and the finishing touches are very important um, use your thinning shears to get rid of the um, imperfections and the finishing spray, um, any, any condition spray that is light. This is a, actually a quicker slicker. I use it a lot as a finishing spray and I also use it a lot for, for drying as well. And the continuous spray bottle is, is really not good. All right. Just so you know, I don't work for, uh, for any of these companies. This is just the tool that I like to use and they make my life easier. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. If you have any ideas, feel free to share. Um, if you would like me to post some other videos about something that you're interested in or you have questions, let me know. I will be happy to help um, with the knowledge that I have. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Your groomer next door.